Folks, welcome back to the Strategies in Light live stream. Here we are. Brought to you by the hashtag, man. One call does it all. Bill Brown Sales. Bill Brown Sales. Go to BillBrownSales.com. Folks, if you're a lighting manufacturer, remember, one call does it all with the lighting legend, Bill yeah. Brown. 60 years, 60 tons of integrity. Years. Man, every component you can imagine, they've got. Mark Ray. Hey. Welcome to the Get a Grip on Lighting live stream from Strategies in Light. Thank you. We've been chasing you down for a while, trying to get you. Yeah, you finally caught me. There you go. Got him. So up. tell the listeners, Mark Ray, that for those who don't know you, you're at the Lighting Research Center. Correct. What's your role? Uh, just a vanilla professor. Uh -huh. Just a professor at the, I think you got more than that, don't you? No, I mean, we do research and education. Um, you know, I teach courses and uh, graduate level courses, and we do a variety of research from um, from UV treatment for pathogens and plants to mm -hmm. human factors to technology. It's it's uh, sort of a one-stop shop, I guess, like Bill Brown. Uh, one call every, does it all. One call does it all on the research. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Lighting Research it's, Center. It says you were the director of it. What does that mean versus what you're doing now? At one point you were. For yeah, no, when I when I left Canada in uh, from the National Research Council in uh, 1988, I was the first director of the Lighting Research Center. Okay. And then in 2017, uh, stepped down, and Dr. Mariana Figueroa is now the director. Okay, so that was the role you had in right. that many long time. So two lighting distributors here. Mm -hmm. So every day when I'm not doing podcasts like this, I'm swinging through the trees with a knife in my teeth <laughs> trying to sell light bulbs to people. Okay. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. Yeah, good. I'm pretty good at it, actually. <laughs> but how close am I from standing in front of a customer and saying, you know, gosh, you got to change out these lights to these circadian friendly bad boys and you're going to see all these benefits and here's how it's going to go and sign here, friend. How close are we to that? Well, I think that we're, it's not a product specific um, value proposition. Mm -hmm. It's really how you apply it. And the other thing that complicates it's it's going to be 24 hours. <laughs> so much of what we know about lighting is you take a picture, it looks great, or, yeah, sure. know, or you measure how many watts. Customer it's, likes it. Yeah. yeah. But this is a more subtle um, rhythm that we go through. And you've you no doubt experienced it when you fly across the Atlantic or the sure. Pacific and so on, and then you're biological clock has to readjust to the light dark cycle until when Alabama's. i come up here i get up at three o'clock and two o'clock in the morning yeah because you're on the east coast, coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure right so it, people understand the symptoms um but not necessarily the physiology you can't say well what time is my biological clock right now you don't really have any access to the hmm. hands on the dial yeah, um, yeah sure so like some people get up earlier some people go to bed go to get up a little later some people stay up late at night yeah it's it's interesting um we we believe that um, maintaining a, a robust pattern of light and dark gets people to sleep at the same time. Um, digestion and um, productivity are optimum times. And as long as you're linked to that sunrise, sunset pattern, um, people live longer, uh, they sleep better. Uh, the urban environment has changed all that, though, because we've sort of shielded ourselves not only from rain and snow, but from bright light during the day mm. and then self-luminous displays which are more prevalent now you get brighter light at, at night so this contrast between bright light during the day and dim mm -hmm. light at night has been broken by the built environment so we've been working on technologies that sort of overcome the technologies uh that is the buildings and and the lighting so what we have worked on are uh, personal light sensors uh, that keep track of the photons, and then the algorithms inside will tell you where your biological clock is. And although we don't have a fancy watch, I mean, you can see where your biological clock is within about an hour. Um, so we would be able to tell you, you know, hmm. how quickly you're adjusting to San Diego time. Um, I would say I'm not. I'm almost passed out <laughs> on the last podcast. But you're indoors all day. So how are you? Yeah, see, so you're not treating yourself properly. How do you? How did you measure it? You said. Is it yeah, we we um, we have a sensor, not unlike this microphone on the headset, um, mm -hmm. that actually was recording uh, every photon that you're exposed to, your face is exposed to. Where that. is the sensor placed? Uh, well, we have various uh, manifestations of that. Some we put on glasses frames. Uh, we have used mainly uh, ones that work as pendants. We have ones that clip onto your shirt. 
Okay. Um, and we run into difficulties with that, uh, particularly when you're working with Alzheimer's. They lose them. Uh, they break them. Uh, sure. So it's it's not trivial, but uh, the best subjects we ever had were nurses and teachers. They are cooperative and they are going to do whatever you ask them to do. But you send it to, you know, you run in the mill business person that's flying, they forget it or hey, they got other things on their mind and they just don't do it. So it's much harder to get that that personal light, dark exposure pattern. But if you can get it, then uh, we're able to predict where your biological clock um, is at this moment. So whether you're in San Diego or Sydney, Australia. Hmm. And then you're able to react appropriately in terms of what lighting you need or light levels. Is that the... you, you can write a recipe. Yep. Um, but you know the trouble with the researchers, we get down in the weeds too quickly. You know, and um, I think that um, for those people that aren't doing uh, trans uh, continental travel and so on, uh, getting out in the door outdoors, you know, for half an hour, an hour every day, um, will reset your clock every morning so that you're. You're pretty well in train. Now we've worked in Sweden, where they have very uh, short days in the in the winter time and long days at night. And what's interesting, it's very clear that the lights that, given the lifestyles they have, they can't synchronize with the electric light in the buildings very well. But in the summertime, what's really interesting, some people are morning people, as you said, and they'll synchronize to the morning because they run in the morning or whatever. Sure. And some people are late, and they will synchronize as well. So, so their body adapts. Well, what, that's right. Exactly right. But what's interesting is everybody has sort of an ideal, from their perspective, ideal sort of an entrainment, what we call entrainment angle with respect to your clock. Um, they don't have that opportunity in the winter time. But what we found when we did this study with the Navy, one of the big benefits was they, they, they moved to 24 hours. It used to be 18-hour shifts, uh, rotations on the submarine. Now we moved it to 24 gave them bright light during the day, and they're all day workers, right? Because they're in the water. Yeah, well, and they hot bunk, so they go through this. Yeah, they're hot shacking it. You're right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, sure. But but what we what what the commander of the submarine saw, they were working as a team now because everybody was synchronized together. And before that, they, you know, somebody was really sleepy, somebody was perky, sure. and so they weren't doing the teamwork. So the point being that in Sweden, you may not get that teamwork. It may not matter. You work at home, and sure. it doesn't really matter. But Really, the point is, if you want people to work as teams, you've got to get their biological clocks aligned. Yeah. Well, this is what they're doing in professional sports these days. Circadian yeah. rhythm. Yeah, they're given light therapy. To, well, you're going across from the East Coast to the West sure. Coast to play basketball, sure. and they hockey, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So they're um, they're they're trying to use light as a way of getting everybody to work together. Now, when you're doing these studies. It was it color changing as well, or Kelvin color tuning, or are you just sticking to a color and then adjusting levels? Well, color matters, yeah. but it's a relatively small effect. It it really mainly deals with flux density. You you crank up the flux. I mean, it can't be a red light, but yeah. if you give white light and of sufficient quantity, it kind of doesn't matter what the CCT is. Sure. Um, I mean, it's a little bit, uh, I'm not saying it's zero, but it's uh, small with respect to doing that. And I think the real challenge that we're going to face if we're going to do this and do it effectively, we're going to have to get the light levels up in our offices and schools and hospitals and with energy codes that may be a difficult uh, thing to overcome I, was, I made the point that it's time for the lighting industry to ask for some energy back <laughs> i agree <laughs> you know it's like t i'm t sick of the bean counters everything's not lumens per watt you know yeah, that's it, exactly right yeah you know it's like we, we we made our contribution now it's time oh. to now it's time for the you know the uh the, the electricity generators to make clean energy actually <laughs> i i agree but, you know, name another industry that's made significant no progress beyond lighting. Lighting, lighting is amazing. Amazing, yeah. 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 Well, what, what we've been able to accomplish as an industry in terms of carbon emissions, whatever you want to measure, we destroyed every other industry. In terms Absolutely. Of There's no one even come close. But how many, does your next door neighbor know that? No, they don't. And not only that, though, but you're talking about um, a, a an effort that goes from the white tower intellectuals through to the manufacturers and the universities down to the distributors and the contractors, everybody working together. To, to you know to from utilities and everything it's really a full industry effort and but, I, I think we crushed it to be honest with you yeah but the the members of parliament and our congressmen they don't realize what a significant strides uh lighting has made for the environment i mean i think that hmm. we do a lousy job as an industry of articulating the value that we're providing and now with the fact that lighting can non-pharmacologically improve the health and sure. well-being 
it's going to be the same story again, right? The, I, I got to ask you. Okay, so you know how you see those things on the TV? It's like know your your genetic background or whatever, and you can see that they send you your genes, and mm -hmm. then you they send you this little graph, and maybe you're a little bit from Poland and a little bit from Germany and whatever, right? You can see this sort of stuff. Is it? And that looks fun. That's fun, maybe, you know, sure. to figure that out. But is it not more helpful for people to understand their circadian rhythm, perhaps? Is that not more specific, like if you're a doctor and you understood this about you? Uh, I'm about to go into a lecture. Is that okay? Yes. Right now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah, lecture away. Oh, yeah, for sure. Hit it up. That's why we got you here. Well, we evolved under sunrise and sunset. And one thing you can count on, the sun's going to come up. Uh, every 24 hours sure. and it's going to go down every 24 hours right now seasonal variation and sure. so on but the point is the cycles um, 24 hour pattern mm -hmm. and every species every species on the planet of the earth um, on this planet earth uh, it has learned evolutionarily speaking has learned that that's something you can really count on. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we've done is we've built our biology, whether you're a nocturnal species like an owl or a mouse, or you're a diurnal species like a... Or you're a phytoplankton in the ocean. Or a phytoplankton in the ocean. They're all going through that same cycle, and they'll go down into the deep sea and then come back up, and all of the things that are driven by this 24-hour clock. What we forget, and, and, the, and each of those plankton are going to have their own genetic makeup. Sure. There's a lot of individual differences. But what the light-dark pattern does is synchronize them all to behave accordingly. So you may have a clock, an intrinsic clock. If I put you in the dark and measure your rhythm, you might be 23.8 hours. I might be 24.3 hours. Sure. You could be 24 hours right on top. But because of this tight linking between the sunrise and sunset, we all synchronize to that signal. That's how we work as a social species we are synchronized the problem is the problem is that we've built these environments that now protect us or shield us from that strong light dark mm. pattern and people are getting sick um it's the kind of thing that i uh, i think it, it's incumbent upon i won't just say the lightning industry but the medical community and politicians to actually recognize this biology and provide kids in school um elderly that are in stuck in uh, senior housing or submariners with this strong 24-hour power and light and dark so everybody can sync up again to that well the one guy who's like a really screaming this from the rooftops is that mark lillian character yeah. and he slid me a little note and he said he, he mentioned about your recipe um for a circadian adam entrainment lillian. oh sorry. Uh, <laughs> adam like you're mark, mark. he's uh, he's yeah. i'm reading we're a team yeah, yeah yeah there you go so uh <laughs> is the recipe ul24480 Yes. What That's, about it? Is that the right recipe to it, start right now? Well, uh, it, it's constrained. If you're a shift worker, no. Uh, if you just flew from Paris, no. Uh, but if you are the run-of-the-mill sort of daytime worker and you want to sleep at night at 10 o'clock or midnight, whatever is the answer is yes to that question. Hmm. So we're not trying to re-entrain people from trans-meridian flight nor are we trying to deal with the shift work problem. That, that's, those are important, mm -hmm. but that's not the scope of this particular document. This is a, just a general uh, recipe for it's the average... 80% of the working Average population. 9 to 5 worker. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, huh. you could be uh, you know, a 7 to 4 worker or whatever. You, th there are limits to what you can do, but if you're starting your work at shift at midnight, it doesn't apply. So I, I have another little question for you here that's completely from my own, okay? I think... So you talked about, you know, evolution and looking at us sort of from a zoological, anthropological perspective, right? These rhythms, we're mm -hmm. not separated from them, right? No. We are in them and very much embedded in them. And there's other rhythms too, like the earth going sun mm -hmm. and the sun going, there's, there's rhythms everywhere that are, are kind of rolling together. That's correct. Um, there's something to me to the color of fire and the infrared spectrum that does something to humans, that makes them comfortable at night or makes them feel safe. Or, do you know what I'm talking about? That warm color of candlelight or firelight and the draw to it. Like humans can sit around a fire and just stare at it. And then they talk to each other and there's like a, an element of safety and warmth. There's the infrared heat coming from the fire and the light coming from the fire and the protection of it. it. Do you guys know anything about that? Is that part of our evolution? Did our ancestors evolve differently because of that firelight at night? 
Well, I'll give you an amateur's opinion. If that's you don't anything. Yeah, sure. Well, you're, you're definitely not an amateur, <laughs> man. If anybody not. doesn't know, if anybody knows, it's you. So. Well, we, um, the circadian system, this governing of sunrise, sunset, uh, firelight's too dim to really upset that. So, but we are hungry for visual information. Hmm. So if you think about fire, it's sort of an ideal nighttime source in that you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, see each other they're on the fire dance around or whatever you want to do but at sure. the same time you're not disrupting your circadian strong light dark pattern. it's still night for the circadian system even in firelight sure. you can see the eye is exquisitely sensitive we we don't even need a full moon to see under starlight sure and that's a good thing the saber tooth tigers would have got us by now if uh <laughs> if we weren't able to do that range but what's nice about the circadian system it sets a very high threshold you really got to pound it with light for it to be convinced it's daytime. Mm. And that's why in the interest of reducing energy and the cost, we've put it below that in some places, I'm not saying everywhere, but in some places we've pushed it so low that it's no longer a daytime signal to the biological clock. Mm. We can see fine. Yeah. yeah. But it, the circadian system is blind. Hmm. Now you wrote a book in 2013 uh, called the value metrics for better lighting. What happened in 2013, Mike, on our end? What do you mean? The industry. I love the timing of it. You know, that's right when LED took off. Right? Yeah, right. It's dedicated to the notion that our society undervalues light because we do not properly. I think measure. we take it for granted. Oh, I don't think absolutely. we value it at all. It's Even a, in the industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right about that. Yes, I think you're right about that, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, it's product we talk about, not about lighting. Yes. Yes, it's lighting designers. Tables. A lot of lighting designers aren't in that aren't in that trap. I agree. But I'll tell you, contractors and, and distributors, we are one hundred percent in that trap. Yeah, the idea of moving product and yeah, it's interesting. When I was talking to Jennifer Veach on the podcast about a year ago, it kind of came out like we're kind of like fish figuring out we're in water with light. Yeah, Mariana did a TED talk on that very subject. I don't oh, know did if you've you? seen it. It was no. a TED Med talk. It's, I strongly recommend you look at it. It's uh, it's specifically to that point. Yeah. And it's interesting. I think it's like the secret of the universe. Like, you know, all life has is, 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 is working in these rhythms, right? All life. Yes. All life. Absolutely. You know, and it's like, if we figure it out, maybe we figure, you know, maybe that's Eve's apple. You know what I mean? To figure that out. It's really to understand these rhythms is really the secret to the universe. Well, hopefully it's not Pandora's box, but yeah, that would be. Uh, it could go either way, right, Mark? <laughs> so how can we, you said we don't properly measure its benefits. How, I mean, right now, what are we measuring, Mike? We're energy savings, we're light output. Watts and lumens, and that doesn't represent lighting at all. I mean, yeah. it, we have, in 1924, we came up with this thing called the photopic luminous efficiency function, which defines the lux that we use. And as science has progressed, and we're still stuck in 1924, because V lambda, which is the photopic luminous efficiency function, which is in all your light meters and all the regulations sure. globally, is only two of the five photoreceptors in the eye. And so we've completely neglected short wavelengths. And there's a whole bunch of action going on in short wavelengths. Color vision, for example, plus sure. um, short wavelength cone. You've got melanopsin, which is part of the circadian regulation system. You have brightness perception. All of those things uh, we fight against as an industry because we're stuck with this 1924 metric. That has to change or we're not gonna change. So this book, is about how what we call different channels, that the eye is not a monolith. There are different wires that hook up from the photoreceptors, go to different parts of the brain, but they each have a different set of photoreceptors that they're drawing on. So circadian does not draw on at all on these L and M cones, long wavelength, middle wavelength cones, on which is the foundation for V lambda. So all of our standards inherently punish <laughs> circadian rhythms. Uh, it, so w we need to be aware as an industry where the opportunities lie. But like everybody else, lighting people just only respond to a crisis. They don't respond to the opportunities equally. So I think there's a lot of chances to save energy, provide greater value, whether it's circadian. I think part of it comes down to like, you know, um, you, you know that thing like humans you're, you, you'd rather you'd rather not lose five bucks than gain five bucks. Yeah, right. It's like lo fear of loss is more powerful than potential gains, like the incentive. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're going to run faster if you're being chased by a saber toothed tiger than if you're running after you know a food. Oh, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're just you're we're fear based creatures in a sense, and so like there's a sense that it's uncertain. 
no one uh at so if you want to start really moving you gotta we gotta get this real valuable information in the hands of the contractors and the distributors and well, then, you, you asked the right question what's next yeah. okay we've saved a lot of energy yeah. right we got long life okay yeah. what, what's next yeah give us some energy back to do have some fun give us some of the antelope uh, i think the saber two tigers have been taken care of let's, yeah let's 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 go hunting yeah agreed Agreed. Mark Ray, thanks for being a guest. Yeah, sure. Pleasure. And remember one thing. Yeah. One call does it all, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Brown Sales. Go to BillBrownSales.com for the, you know, man, legend. Bill Brown's a legend. I'm so glad we got to meet him, actually, for sure. and interview him on the show back episode number 10. Feels like a million years ago, but it's probably three years ago. All you out there listening, check it out. Mark Ray coming in hot on the Get a Grip on Lighting Strategies and Light live stream. Thanks for listening.